end of days. We exalt and honor you because in your kingdom there are no accidents. O oh Lord, you are the God that controls and lead by your right hand. There is no searching of your understanding. Your ways are past finding out. Lord, you have been our God before the nation were brought forth, ever before thou created the heaven and the earth. All things exist from you, and they proceed from you. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to lead us today, to guide us in this fellowship hour. As we have come to you, O Lord, may we never be disappointed. Open our mouth wide and fill it up with your word. Teach us what you want us to teach your people. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brethren, today you are welcome once again to this Open Heart Fellowship. Today is our prophetic hour. It's a time we join together as mission to understand biblical prophecy and what God has hidden in his word. Because the Bible says it is in the heart of a king to conceal a matter. And it is the heart of the wise to sort out the matter. Today, we gather together to sort out what God has hidden in the word. And that's we dissolve biblical prophecies by explaining the meaning and interpretations to every believer. But today, we are starting a new series. Yesterday, we ended a series program which focused on salvation. Today, we are starting a new one which focus on discipleship, discipleship series. In this discipleship series, we have about eight lectures. Today, we are starting with one of the series on discipleship. And the topic is loving others. Loving others. It is easier to love those that love you. But today's teaching is not about loving those that love you. It's about loving those who are not capable of love. Loving those who you know fully well can never love you. That no matter what you give them, the love does not just exist in their hearts. But the Bible makes us understand that love triumphs over God's judgment. And we are going to be searching the hearts and the mind to understand how easy it is not only just to love ourselves but to love other people as well because sometimes when we get step upon hot objects or nail on the ground we easily want to attend to the body we bait it with clean water we go to the hospital or clinic to treat our body and to ensure that we are well preserved and our life is well kept and speared for a better use but how often can we do the same for other people? There are a lot of people in our corner who are in desperate need of our love. Just as we love God, which is a good thing, but do we love the brethren also? It's easier to go to church every Sunday to sing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And that is because you don't see God. You have never been in his presence. And God is many miles away in heaven. So he doesn't really seize your heart. That's what you think. But if you actually claim you love God, what about his creature? Those things that were made after his image. And his likeness. And then you hate your brother. If you cannot love your brother which you see, how possible is it to love God? which you have never met or do not see. So, if you love God, love your brother also. By the time we take time to exploit our brothers, to hurt one another, to do evil to those who are at ease, but we claim we love God, how do we the love of God in us? Today we shall be diving into the teaching on loving other people. How it is easier to love those that love you. It's easier to love those who favored you. Either in business, as a Christians. But how easy 
easy to love a criminal somebody that take away the life of your close relative somebody that in every way is not there is nothing attracting you to that love because that is one word that is grossly misused in today's world you heard little boys of 12 years will go to another little boys of 18 and say i love you or a little girl of 18 and say i love you but how possible one love comes with responsibility and two weeks later the same young man or young girl will say to the boy well the love has expired today world is where we find an inspired love but the bible did teach us about a kind of love love that have no expiring date love that does not keep record wrong love that cannot be pushed or persuaded to give up love that does not rejoice in committing sin love that is not give and take love that is not Conceit on demand and request. People will claim they love you as long as the advantage is coming from one side. But how often does your love come from a genuine heart when there is nothing attached to it? No gift, no flowers, no roses. That is the love we are here to talk about on this prophetic hour loving others one of the functions of a disciple is to love not just his master it's easier for a disciple to love his master but to love others as well and that means be ready to forgive as often as they offend you be ready to work with those who consider themselves your enemy. Be ready to go to any message at the request of the master, even when the master has previously offended you. That is the love that a disciple requires in order to build his faith on it. Last week we dealt with the topic, salvation. This topic is as important as salvation because for you to be able to save, you must have gone through the process of salvation. And now that you have been saved, you are born again in the Christian terms, or you have gone through all the phases of salvation. Now is the right time for you to focus on the first steps in discipleship, loving others. Because this is the fruit that you get at salvation. Because when the Holy Spirit gave you the spirit of adoption, the spirit of adoption is the spirit of love. Love cannot come except you are adopted into the family of God. Do you know why? God himself is love. And the only way you can love your neighbor is you love God. That is the first thing. If you don't love God, you cannot love your neighbor also. And if you claim you love God and you hate your neighbor, that means it's not the love of God. Because let's look at the characteristic of God. Let's consider the rain. The rain fall upon an evil man farm as well as the rain of emotion, lust of the eyes, lust of signs, shapes, formats. These are not love. The love of God is called agape love because it comes from the depths of the hearts. Love that has no precondition, no premolition, nothing is stimulating such love other than genuine reverence for God or fear of God. That is the love we are talking about today. Jesus loved you. He was a king. He decided to leave his throne. His name was Emmanuel. That means he was God living with us. And 
he decided to abandon all his glory. He went to take a shameful death on the wooden cross. Even the Bible says, cost is that man that hung upon the tree. He made himself a cause for your sake. And because of his cause, you were liberated from the cause of death, which come through sin. That is how extent Christ went for your sake. Because he loves you. And if God is telling you to love the same way Christ loved, he is telling you what you should do. He makes no mistakes about it. What did he say? He said in verse 12, This is my commandment, that you should love one another even the same way I loved you. Love one another like Christ loved you. How does Christ love us? He loved us. He gave his life for us. You should be ready to love others the same way Christ loved you. The Bible says he suffered without the gates. So let us also carry our Bible. Be ready to suffer without the city. One of the motivating factors in mission is love for the brethren. And that is one of the requirements of a disciple. Because you cannot witness to people you don't love. If you hate people, you want them to perish. You don't care about their salvation. If you have been warned that war is coming to your city, the first thing you will do is to warn your immediate family about impending war. Figure out a rescue plan for your family. The same thing, if you love the brethren, should come to mind. You knew that something greater than war is coming. Because that man who is living in sin close to your house can die tomorrow. He can decide to cross the road and is knocked down by a drunk driver. And you don't know the number of days he has on earth. But yet you delay his salvation. You have every opportunity to preach to him or her. But you decide not to do it. Don't worry. Next week I will do it. From next week I will make it next two weeks. From next two weeks I will make it next three weeks. Before you know you hear that that man, oh, he died yesterday and he slept. And then you join the people that will eat rice on his burial. And when the man of God, the bishop, stand upon the altar and said, he, behold, he was a good man. You join them and say, man, indeed, he was a good man. When you yourself knew where his end is. The Bible says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. The saints should rather die for a wicked man to die. Because when the saint dies, God owns that soul. But when the wicked perish, it's like a beast that perish. His place, remember, it's normal. What was before him was utter darkness. After him is everlasting torment and torture. God is not, does not delight in the death of the wicked. Then we have some Christians who live in love, praying for their brother to perish, for their sister to die. If the man that hurt you died in his sin, how did it serve the purpose of God's creation? How does it serve God's purpose of creating that man or woman? How does it generate the feeling of God, Holy Spirit, who want to have fellowship with man, if that man died in his sin? And if a wicked man is taken in the midst of his sin, God has lost that soul forever. Why should you rejoice in the death of a sinner? In discipleship, the first quality is love. It takes love for the master's purpose 
and the master will to be a disciple. One of the commandments of the master is to love one another. And that is the first and the only commandment the master gives to us. And if you are a disciple, shouldn't you obey your master? And if you must obey your master as a disciple, you must love others also. Because the Lord loves you. And the Father himself loves you. Christ himself testified of how the Father loves us. Therefore, we should love one another also. Because if we forgive others not their trespasses, neither will our Heavenly Father forgive us our trespasses. If we love not our brother, and though we claim to have all spiritual power, we speak in tongues of men, in tongues of angels, how dwells the love of God in us? The Bible makes us understand that God loves are without repentance. God loves are without repentance. Now, let us learn more in verse 13. Greater love that hath no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. Greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. Have you ever thought of that? You have your team of mission or your team of evangelists going out on an outreach and you come to a place and they are looking for the team to kill and to mail or do evil to. And while they are looking for your team, you hide your team and presented yourself. That is the kind of love God is talking about here. Or will you rather run away on a bulletproof car as the leader of the team and allow your team to be slaughtered? After all, the mission will pay for their burial. Is that how you will handle it? The way you will handle it will determine if you are actually a shepherd or you are just a higher servant who care only he bars his wages. The hiring will not spend his money to do the master's job because it's a wasted effort. He will prefer somebody else to arrange the chair. He will come and sit down. The hiring will not champion the cause of the mission. No. He will prefer that another man champion it and he himself preserve his honor. The hiring will take a back seat in raising a fund to sponsor the transportation in the mission, to feed the poor, to care for the hungry, to create a space for the bishop, the harvest will withdraw himself when there is no money to pay for allowances in the mission. The hiring would not be happy if all his benefits are not paid in full because the mission is short of cash. All these are the quality of the hiring. But the shepherd serve not for money. Whether that his salary comes or it doesn't come, he cares little about it. The shepherd will give up his life on behalf of the sheep. It is less for a disciple to be like his master. And for a disciple to be like his master, he has to embody the quality of his master. Christ gave up his life for his friend. A disciple must be ready to give up his life for his friend. That is the love God is talking about. Brethren, let's understand the quality of a disciple. In Romans chapter 8, 13 verse 8, 
let no doubt remain outstanding. Let no doubt remain outstanding. Accept the debts to love one another. As a disciple, your first quality is to own no man anything. Don't be a debtor. Don't owe anybody anything. But the only debt you have to owe other is the debt of loving them. Whatsoever love other has fulfilled, because whosoever loves other people fulfills the laws of Christ. Because God is love. And anyone that loves knows God. And if you love not, you do not know God. And the love, the seed of God, does not abide in you. You cannot be in a place called a place of adoption or receive the spirit of adoption and the seed of love is not in you. How dwell God in you? Adoption carries God presence. It means as a son, you should resemble your father. Your father is love. Should the son be hate? No. The son should also be love. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, don't do anything out of selfish ambition. This is very important for us as believers. Some people will tell you, don't worry. I will help you. Is it not just to fix the chair, to gather the team together, and to go for outreach? I will do it. And while he's going, in his back pocket, he has another trap. None of bearing the name of the mission. Bearing his own ministry is about to set up. And he do everything to push the pastor in that zone out, so that he himself can fill that position. He is not working for God, but rather working for himself. He is doing everything he is doing out of selfish ambition and for vain descent. Rather, as a Christian, we do not do those things. We rather walk in humility, value others above ourselves. Let not your needs as a believer come first. Let the needs of others come first in your mind. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 48, you have heard it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That is the quotation today in many churches. Some people go to the extent of praying for their enemy to die. But God is saying to you, but I tell you, love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. Some people say, God said we should pray for them. He never told us the kind of prayer we should pray. But God is saying to you, pray for them for their repentance. So I'm telling you the kind of prayer you should pray. Pray that they also be converted. When you get to a place where people are cursing, fighting, ready to kill, it is not a time to persecute them. It is not a time to prove you have the Holy Spirit that by calling fire down from heaven to consume your enemy. No. Follow peace with all men. Righteousness and holiness without which no man can see the Lord. That is what the scripture teaches. And that's what we believe. But I tell you, Love your enemy. Don't take revenge against them. But rather love them. Pray for those who put rope on your neck and persecute you. That you may be children of your father. Because that is what he did. God consider his love towards us. While we are yet alien from the covenant. Yet enemies. We were reconciled to him. Ought you not to reconcile to your enemy as well? That you may be children of your heavenly father, which is in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil 
and the good and send rain on the rats and he also sent rain on the righteous and the same way he sent it on the evil doer and the wicked so as christian let us be wise in the things of god but rather let us be simple concerning that which is evil Okay. But I tell you, I tell you of the truth. Pray for those who persecute you. And I say so that you may be children of your fathers in heaven. Because he caused the sun to rise upon the evil and the good alike. And he also sent the rain upon the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what is your gain then? What reward do you have if only your friends are the people you love? Don't the meaty goer, the secret courts, the ungodly group do the same thing? They also love their member. They even fight for one another. And they even ready to go to war to defend one another. So how are you different from the occult? How are you different from the witches? Who will only eat those who are not their member? So, if you call yourself a believer, and the character of witchcraft is in you, you only love those that love you. How are you different from the witches? How are you different from the people that you, re you now hate and rebuke? Why was he fighting to kill you in the first place? Was he not defending one of his tribes? So if these are their reward, and the people you hate are living the same quality as you, how dwell the love of God in you? Where does Christ in your heart get formed in the process in christianity we should know god love is sold in peace in they that make peace and not even the tax collector doing the same thing people that collect tax they love their fellow tax collector that they don't go to their house of collectors so and you yourself say you are a christian you only greet those that belong to your church if another church is holding fellowship or crusade even if it may benefit your life because of loyalty to the church you may not go even if you know that you could be a help in that group you will not want to help because it's not your church ability to please god that is all he's asking for in luke chapter 6 verse 31 do to others as you want others to do to you this is all that the laws of the prophets tells you about just do to others what you want others to do to you in first corinthians chapter 16 verse 14 it says do everything in love everything but what did he say love is what you should strive for this was the teaching I received in my early days as a believer and I knew something was outstanding in that topic that was the first time I ever heard about love and when I heard it it was in church a small church in Benin City As we were fellowship, filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, laying hand on the sick and they recover, a little boy, fair in comprehension, pick up my Bible from my hand 
And I can still remember that day vividly. And he picked the Bible. He opened First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1a. And he gave it to me. And when I read it, he said, love is what you should strive for. And I said to you, love is what you should struggle for. As a believer, you might speak in tongues of men and of angels. You might lay hand on the sick and they recover, which I have personally laid hand on many. You can heal, raise the dead, do all kind of wonder, cast out devils. If you don't have love, you are a noisemaker. Love should be what you should strive for. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14, that you should do everything in love. Even if you want to give gifts to people, let it come from a heart full of love. If not, don't give it. If you want to pay tithe, let it come from a heart of love. If not, your tithe is a gift to the pastor. If you want to give offering in the church, let it come from a heart full of love. If not, don't give the offering. God will not accept an offering that is corrupt and is dirty. If you have come to God to do anything, first check, do I love this person enough to pray for healing? Do I love this person enough to want to save him from death? Do I love this person enough that I want him to be whole just as I am whole? This is what God wants from us. Let this love be triggered from within. Everything you do as a believer, let love be the dropping factors. By the time you gather friends together and say, I want all of you to work for me, and back of your mind you tell them, don't worry, I'm helping you. And the back of your mind you think, I'm going to gain this. Ah! I want to sow this seed so that I can gain. I will gain. Oh, the only reason I want to build the mission house is so that I can make more offering or tithe or benefits. Because it is not of love. You might gain all those things, but you will never. So that sometime in the future, he will also invite me to his church and give me so so and so amount. I look at him and I shook my head. I said, You will be so disappointed. That he may not even invite you to his church. Because God is saying to you, don't do anything out of vain glory and for earthly reward. If you do things to be rewarded by your neighbor, you have gotten already the benefit and the reward. Your heavenly father will no longer reward you. But if you want God to be your rewarder, then cast your bread upon the water. Let it go. And God, who sees in secrets and know the thought of every heart, he will reward you openly. In the book of Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, he say, a friend loves at all times, but a brother is born in time of adversity. A friend will love you at every time. Because he is your friend. He is doing everything to please you. Because there is a motive behind it. And that motive is because he's your friend. But what happened to a brother? In time of adversity, when no hope, when friends have run away, a brother will show up. So as a disciple, struggle not just to be a friend. Be a brother. Because friend will love. Ah, he's my friend. I love him. Let the day come that that friend is to lay down his life for you. He will take off. But a brother will stand in the day of adversity. He may not be bold enough to lay down his life, but he will be there to clean your blood from the floor. He is a brother and is born for adversity. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'll read. I'm going to read the whole chapter. 
I'm going to start from one from verse one. What did he say? He said, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, I have none love. What does it give? It profits me nothing. I speak the tongues of men. That means I have the Spirit of God indwelling in me. But I don't have the fruit. That means I'm just a noise maker in the church. Anytime the pastor is saying, ah, pack, 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 pack. You tell the such a man, shut up. Because that is not what God requires. But God is saying to you, if and though I have the gift of prophecy, when I prophesy the rock, obey. Anything I say come to pass. But and understand even the mysteries, hidden mysteries of the word of God, all mysteries. Not some, all mysteries. I understand it. But <laughs> And I have all knowledge that I can tell people name even where they sit. Even though I have faith so that I could say to this matter be removed and be thrown into the sea and they obey me. And I and though I bestow all the food in my household and say to the poor in the street come and eat and be satisfied. <laughs> and though I give my body on behalf of an inmate who is about to be sentenced to death and I face death sentence instead of the inmates and I did not do it because I love them it profit me nothing I die for nothing and my food are for nothing the prophecy are for nothing. The faith are for nothing. The healings are for nothing. The anointing is for nothing. If it's not based on love. Love is what? Patience. There is, this is the attribute of love that many people do not understand. Love is long-suffering. There is no love without long-suffering. Love is kind to order love is not born out of envy they don't see other people have a car and say this car i must kill him and have the car who is this boy to ride the car before me that is not love love does not come from envy love is not boastful of what he has love is not proud and it does not dishonor other people. And it's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It does not keep record of wrongdoing. Love does not delight in doing evil to others. But what does he do? He rejoices in the truth. That's what love does. Now, the first question for us today, how do I love others? How? Is it possible? Or maybe loving others means loving only those who have the same mind as I am. Can only love Christian after I cannot love unbeliever. The Bible says, do not be equally yoked together with unbeliever. But what did the Bible say? It says, love your enemy. So, how do I love unbeliever? Will they not lead me into sin? The Bible says, hate the clothes, stain with sin. Hate the sin and love the person. Oh, that man, I can't love that man. He's in wish. Yes. Love the man, hate the witchcraft. I can't love that man. It's a demon possessed. Love the man and hate the demon inside. Oh, how can I love that killer? 
love the person, hate his ability to kill, and bring him to Christ. Loving does not mean you should go and put kiss in his mouth. It means you have to do everything to ensure his welfare, to save his life, to connect him to the kingdom. That is the love God is talking about. It doesn't mean you have to go to bed with them. Don't start and say, Pastor, say we should love. That's why I went to go and sleep with him. That is not the love we're talking about. The love we're talking about here is the love that motivates you to save his soul, to seek his welfare, to not want him to perish. The same love that Christ loved you, that he gave his life, struggling to save your soul. What make you feel missionary go to a place where the people are holding sword waiting for them to kill them at every instance? The reason is because of love. Love is the propelling force that drag them to save those lives. Accept one another. Love makes you to accept other people as you are. No, don't underrate any man. Accept everybody as your equal or greater than you. Truly, to truly love someone, you must avoid trying to change the person to be your own. We have so many Christians. When they go to a village, they want to convert the villager to focus on their religion so that they can convert them. But God is not sending you to convert people away from their custom or to change their doctrine or religion. God sent you to lead them to Christ. Let your message be Christ-centric. If they prefer to worship in the mosque, let them worship in the mosque. If they prefer to go to church on Saturday, let them go to church on Saturday. If they prefer to go on Tuesday, let them go on Tuesday. If they prefer anything, don't change their custom. Focus on their salvation. Hate their claws spotted with sin. Snatch them out of fire. That is what God has sent you. Don't change the people's purpose. Don't change their directions in life. Minister grace to him. Gradually, let God do the drawing. God did not send you to condemn anybody. God has sent you to preach the gospel. Focus on the gospel. God himself will draw the people to himself. It is not you that will do the drawing. It is not you that will execute judgment. God did not send you to execute judgment upon the unbelievers. He sent you to save their life. Accepting love is patient and kind. Be patient with the man that refused to give his life to Christ. Don't give up. Because love never give up. Wait patiently. Stay at the door every day of his life and knock. Jesus is always knocking. He didn't say because you have gone so far, he's leaving the door. Every day he's knocking. Christ never gives up over you. Don't give up over another brother. Focus and knock on the doors of his heart every day, every hour, every minute, every second. And even someone does not meet your expectation don't give up hope in the people still continue to train method them do everything to advance their life give them your best and your all first corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 he says to us love suffer long Love suffers long. So you must be ready to embrace long suffering. And he said, it's kind. Love does not envy his brother. Love does not envy others. Love is not does not lift up itself above others. Love is not puff up. Love behave not himself unseemly. 
The only reason that will make others see Jesus in us when going through this world of sin is that we love one another, even as Christ has loved us. Brethren, this is the end of the first series of this teaching. Join us again next week as we go through the second series on discipleship. Brethren, if you miss any of our teaching in the past series on salvation, please go to our website. It's in the link below, which is cgfns cgfms.org.ng Go there and you will see a link to the mission training. Just click on that link. You will find the lessons of last week there. And those lessons are powerful and they are insightful. Everything you need to know about salvation is there. This is the second series, and this teaching is on discipleship. But then, we'll continue the second series of this lesson in a week time. By Saturday, join us as we take the second series on discipleship. God bless you as you participate. Brethren, let us pray. Before we pray, I just want you to reflect on what we know and what we have learned from today. Can you really say that God loves dwells in you? Do you love your neighbor? Do you love your enemy as you love yourself? Do you love those that hate you and persecute you and use you? Do you pray for those that persecute you? Does your church encourage you to fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures? That you should love one another even as Christ has loved you? If not, time has come for you to reconsider. To sit down and think of yourself. If after all the good work you've done on earth, you lost it at the end of the day, is it worth it? If you do not want to lose out, follow the commandments. The Bible says no unclean thing we have right in the kingdom of Christ. If you does not walk in love, your sins will also be remembered. Remember that love triumphs over judgment. It takes the love of God to overcome the judgment of the earth. If you must be free, from allowing others to judge your sin upon you, you must love others as well. Brethren, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have given us a new commandment to love one another, even as you have loved us. Help us, Lord, to walk in love. Because by